So I'm going to go over Starling forces uh, because I don't think I did a very good job of that during lecture. So let's kind of go over these diagrams and explain it a little bit more in detail. Maybe can help answer uh, some questions that you might have. Um, so so Starling, for, Starling was a very busy guy. He um, first was uh, figuring out the heart and Starling's law, which stated that preload determines stroke volume. And that was covered uh, in Starling's law. This is Starling's forces. Now Starling's forces describe the forces that influence bulk flow of material and fluid inside the capillaries to outside uh, the interstitial environment, which surrounds the um, cells in the interstitial environment. And so what are the forces that influence this bulk flow? Uh, well, there are two. There's hydrostatic pressure, and then there is osmotic pressure. Uh, hydrostatic pressure is the pressure that is exerted by the fluid itself. So pressure um, from fluid itself, right? So fluid uh, exerts pressure on the capillary wall. Uh, that is hydrostatic pressure in the capillary. So that is this right here. Um, fluid exerts some pressure in the interstitial environment, but it really amounts to not much at all because there's so much space surrounding all these cells that the fluid can spread out and it exerts minimal to no pressure. Whereas the pressure inside the capillary here, uh, the fluid is in this confined space, right? This little capillary that's confined to this area. And so it's in a confined space. And so it's going to exert more pressure just because it's kind of the fluid smashed into a small space. And everything inside that fluid is also going to create pressure. Osmotic pressure is um, the pressure that is really exerted by the plasma proteins. So plasma proteins uh, created by the liver. And these are called albumins. And um, these plasma proteins uh, create a concentration, right? So you have a concentration of plasma proteins inside the capillary. And as the proteins get more concentrated, uh, as fluid leaves, right? So fluid starts leaving the capillary. And when fluid leaves the capillary due to hydrostatic pressure, so fluid leaves capillary due to hydrostatic pressures, right? Oops. Uh, it's going to make the plasma proteins more concentrated inside the capillary. So that increases the osmotic pressure. So this is an increase in osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure um, is the pressure that is exerted by the plasma proteins to pull fluid back towards them to make the concentration less. So um, osmosis is water goes up the concentration gradient. So we have osmosis is uh, fluid flows up the concentration gradient of a solute. And in this case, the solute are plasma proteins. And so uh, as fluid leaves the capillary, it starts uh, making the osmotic pressure greater at the venous end, right? So fluid's gonna leave and that's creating a greater osmotic pressure at the venous end and that osmotic pressure draws fluid back in, right? Up the concentration gradient. And so this is how forces affect this bulk flow. So hydrostatic pressure, um, here is due to the fluid 
and osmotic pressure is due to the pressure exerted by the plasma proteins to draw fluid towards the plasma proteins. And so what we see is at the arterial end here, hydrostatic pressure is so great that it, it's the primary force, right? It's the greatest force. And so it pushes fluid and small materials out of the capillary. But plasma proteins are plasma proteins for a reason, they stay in the plasma. And so they stay inside the blood, inside the capillary, and as fluid leaves, the concentration of these plasma proteins goes up at the venous end and creates a higher osmotic pressure. So this is osmotic pressure in the capillary. So that pi stands for osmotic pressure. And that pressure is greater at the venous end, and so it draws fluid back in at the venous end. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the overview of how fluid moves. Now, there's a bunch of numbers on this slide, and I know people tend to get nervous about numbers, but we're gonna go through it real quick. And it explains the direction fluid moves, right? And so it's always gonna move, you're always gonna look at the net hydrostatic pressure minus the net osmotic pressure. So the net hydrostatic pressure versus osmotic pressure. And it kind of shows it down here. Um, and instead of calling it hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure, it's calling it filtration and absorption. So when things leave the bloodstream, we call it filtration. So filtration is leaving capillary. That's just the definition of filtration here. And reabsorption is when it, or in this case, the book just calls it absorption, but it really is reabsorption because it did originate from inside the capillary. It's being absorbed back, back into the capillary. So it's coming back. Okay, so the hydrostatic pressure gradient specifically just looking at the hydrostatic pressure gradient, is that at the arterial end um, is, uh, the arterial end here is that you have a hydrostatic capillary uh, pressure of 38 millimeters of mercury. And so it's, it's right here. Um, if you look at the osmotic pressure in the interstitial fluid, it's really zero. There are no plasma proteins out in the interstitium, unless, of course, you burst open your capillaries because you, you broke some blood vessels. But in a normal situation, you should have zero plasma proteins out in the interstitial fluid, so there should be a zero osmotic pressure there. So it's essentially 38 minus zero. Um, because these are the forces. And again, when you're noticing, what am I referring to? It's um, these forces right here, right? So things that favor leaving are these two, and things that favor coming back in are these two. And so that's where we're getting uh, these right here, right? So this goes to there because those favor things coming back in. And these here, because they favor things leaving, right? So that's where we're getting those numbers. Um, so when we look at uh, the absorption at the other end, remember the osmotic pressure still exists at the venous end here, and there's very little to no hydrostatic pressure. Yes, some fluid did leap. And so you have a fluid exertion of one millimeter of mercury. So you got to subtract that and you get 26. And that's where you get this. Um, the overall net, right, is going to be 12 because it's 38 minus uh, 26. And that's where we're getting this fluid movement, right? So net hydrostatic and osmotic, it's telling you which direction the fluid's going. So there's 12 millimeters of mercury that are pushing filter it out. Now on the venual end here, it's a little bit different because you lost fluid 
inside the capillaries. So the hydrostatic pressure is now lower. Uh, again, no plasma proteins left. So it should still be a osmotic pressure of zero in the interstitial fluid. Uh, but the um, plasma proteins are the same in the venous end as they are in the arterial end. Why? Because they theoretically should never be leaving the bloodstream. And so it's still 25 millimeters of osmotic pressure. Uh, and you still have the same pressure out in the interstitium of one millimeter. So you add those together and you're getting 26. So here you have 16 because you lost fluid and you're gonna subtract it, right? So 16 minus 26 is gonna leave you with a negative pressure. And that negative just means it's drawing fluid back into uh, the bloodstream. So negative means reabsorption, positive means filtration. And so uh, again, it's always good to understand the definitions. Hydrostatic pressure, it's the force uh, exerted by the fluid pressing against the walls of the capillary, right? It's gonna be higher at the arterial end because fluid is being pushed out. But as that fluid's being pushed out, obviously the hydrostatic pressure inside the capillary goes down here because there's now less fluid. So less fluid, less pressure on the capillary wall. And so that is where you see the pressure go down. Osmotic pressure shouldn't change because plasma proteins stay inside the bloodstream, which means osmotic pressure in the interstitial fluid should not change. So when we start looking at this right here, hopefully this makes some sense to you, right? So the hydrostatic pressure gradient, um, in the capillaries, right, is going to be, again, let me see if I can write this without getting this, the hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries plus the osmotic pressure in the interstitial fluid. Well, again, should be tantamount to zero. And this is gonna be, you know, blood pressure depending, but if you have a normal blood pressure, it's about 33, eight millimeters of mercury. And then you have to subtract what's going on at the venous end, right? And so this is the osmotic pressure uh, in the capillary and the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial fluid. Well, again, this should still stay the same. It should be one. And the osmotic pressure in the capillary, remember it doesn't change. So if it started out 25, it stays 25. And so um, when you're writing in these numbers, right? So we end up with uh, looking at these, you have filtration minus absorption. So we wrote this out up here, right? And I wrote the numbers down there so you can just transfer them. So it's 38 right there. Let's do it in a different color, so it's obvious. 38, which is that, minus zero, which is that. Or I should say plus, sorry, got that wrong. Um, then we're subtracting 25 here, plus one there, right? So we end up with 38 minus 26. And that leaves us with 12. And so it's a positive number, right? It's positive. And so that favors filtration. So that's here. At the venous end, we're looking down here, and this also shows you down here. But when we're looking at the venous end down here, um, it's, it's different, right? So, uh, we have the hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries is lower, that's 16. Of course, it's still zero here, right? Because the interstitial uh, osmotic pressure hasn't changed. And you minus the osmotic pressure in the capillary, which also hasn't changed, right? So it was 25 here, it's still gonna remain 25 because 
you're healthy and you didn't just break open all your capillaries and form a big bruise. Um, the interstitial fluid, uh, hydrostatic pressure still one. And so here we have 16 going here and it's gonna minus 25 plus one, which is 26. And here you're gonna get a negative 10 millimeters of mercury. Remember negative means it favors reabsorption or how's your book just says absorption, right? So this is that end right there. Uh, so we went over capillary. Osmotic pressure is the force that opposes hydrostatic pressure essentially. And this is due to the plasma proteins. And again, this isn't gonna change um, because osmotic pressure stays the same, right? So osmotic pressure is uh, going to always favor, or it's gonna always stay the same. So osmotic pressure should stay 25 millimeters of mercury. And um, in the NHGM, it should stay zero, right? Uh, and so those numbers shouldn't change. And so it's going to favor reabsorption. And then you will end. And uh, so that's where we're getting this right here. So that is Starling's forces. And hopefully that helps explain that to you.